Here you are, folks. Views from the front. Uh, thank you. Oh. What is this? Dorian's obsession with you is pathetic and infuriating. Look at this. He's done it again. He has written yet another editorial trashing Dorian. Queen of Smut robs the cradle? What has he done? What is going on in his mind? He's as obsessed as Dorian is. I just don't know what that man is thinking of. What? Oh, no. What? Wherever we are, whatever we do, it always comes back to Clint, doesn't it? Beautiful. Beautiful. Not quite in the old Banner style. Well, let's just say we're overhauling the old Banner style. There's no nice way to expose Dorian's business practices, so from now on, it's off with the kid gloves. I'll run this down and tell him it's a go. Oh, Kevin. Where are you going, Dan? Uh, gotta tell my crew there's a green light here. Uh, I'll be right back. Queen of Smut? What's this? It's an editorial. Mm. Not one of my mother's. No, it's one of your father's. I doubt my father's even responsible for this one. Maybe it was one of his um, advisors. If you mean me, why don't you come out and say it, Kevin? And while you're at it, why don't you say anything else that's on your mind? Hey, guys. Hey, Marty. Hey, Marty. Shall we? Uh-uh. Uh, just a salad. Oh, right. Your weight problem. <laughs> Thanks for the invite, huh? And, uh, how come? Well, I... I just missed you, I guess. All right. I'm touched. Well, if it isn't Tinkerbell, now you see her poof. Now you don't. Bye, Todd. So, which is it today? Tramp or tease? Hey, man, that's no way to talk to a lady, all right? A lady? Yeah, a lady. Okay. All right, don't get ripped. I just came by to pay my respects. You're wearing a hole in the rug. Yeah, well, Hank Gannon's gonna be here any minute to talk to you about Asa. But there's nothing to talk about. Oh, really? 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 And, and then why did he tell you not to leave town? Come here. Listen, you worry too much. How can I possibly get into trouble for something I didn't do, huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the expression, miscarriage of justice, huh? You ever heard of that? No, thanks. I can find Oh, great. See? He's here now. Kane. It's ridiculous. Kane, Hank, Tina. Hi, Hank. Can I get you something? What, milk, water, tea, coffee? How about an explanation? What do you mean? I just got the forensics report back. Your fingerprints are all over the sculpture that bashed Asa Buchanan in the head. Let's just skip the pleasantries here and get down to the truth. What do you say? The truth is that I did go over to Asa's and I did, I did threaten him, but I certainly didn't hit him. I mean, that, that is the truth. Asa's housekeeper, Sonny, saw a blonde woman running from the scene of the crime. Now, you just happened to be blonde and you had a motive. Blind rage over Asa taking your kids and every servant in that mansion heard you threaten to kill him. Huh. Now, in my book, calling me wrong, but that makes you a prime suspect by a wide margin, Tina. Call for you in the squad car, sir. Emergency. <sighs> yeah, what is it? I'll be back. And stay put. Thanks. 
Did you hear that? It's in an open and shut case against me. Uh, Tina, I'm going to be put on trial for attempted murder. Uh, Tina, and then I'm going to be convicted, and then I'm going to be sent up the river, and I'm going to be put in the gas chamber. I'm going to be put in the gas uh, chamber like that movie with Susan you, Hayward. You're getting hysterical. Okay, I'm listen. Not. Kane, what do I do? Calm down, honey. Calm down, all right? I'm not going to let anything happen to you. All right, baby? Okay, come here. All right. You want to make a statement, Tina? Uh, listen, Hank. You want to hear the truth? Here it is, okay? From you, Kane? Look, don't try anything so new and unfamiliar. Not for my sake, okay? Look, I'm not going to let Tina take the fall for this. Meaning? Meaning I did it. All right, I'm the one who did to Asa what everybody in Landview has wanted to do to him. So you, you better arrest me, okay? Lindsay, let's let's just drop it. No, wait, okay? Kevin. I I didn't mean for that to come out so strong. It's just that the other day I couldn't help overhearing something you said to your father. And what is that? Something about me that wasn't very flattering, about the way I look at Clint. No, wait. And a how minute. I was after him with everything I had. Oh, you just happened to overhear but all Kevin, that, huh? I didn't bring this up to fight about it. I understand. This isn't an easy time for you or your family, but it is not my aim to make it any harder. My parents split up when I was uh, just about your age. And it hurt like hell. So believe me, I am not moving in for the kill. I never said you were. But, uh, yeah, but I don't want you to even think it. Your father and I are colleagues and friends. I have no designs on him. I hope you believe me. Believe me, nothing is going to ruin this time that we have together. Uh, you promise? Oh, I cross my heart, hope to die. It's just that my father always had a vision for the banner, and I've always felt it was my responsibility to protect that vision. I never dreamed I'd have to protect it from Clint. I just don't know what is going on in his mind. Well, you know, he is right. Her paper is a disgrace. Give me a few minutes, okay? I'm going to just call him and find out what he's doing, all right? Oh, and yes, uh, yes, yes. then I can get it off my I mind. wouldn't stand in your way. I think uh, Mr. Emerson will have a telephone for you. I'll be right back. Yes. Mr. Emerson? Well, what are you two talking about? Business. Not much. I'll, I'll uh, see you too. You can and... Clint, it's Vicky. Oh, where are you? You're supposed to be on that train. I am on the train. And I just saw the late edition of today's banner. Clint, how could you do this? How could you run that editorial? For lack of a better word. Queen of smut robs the cradle? Well, because that's exactly what Dorian is, and that's exactly what she's doing. Look, save the high moral tone lecture, will you? I mean, these days it just isn't becoming to you. Look, this is not about you and me or Sloan and me. This is about our newspaper. Well, let me remind you that I am still editor of this newspaper, and I will decide what goes into it. Just me, not you, and not your oh-so-grand boyfriend, Sloney, or wherever the hell he might be. Now, listen, I'm expecting some copy on the Silver Galaxy. Uh, when might I expect to receive that? You will get it when I write it. Goodbye. tell you train trips are romantic. They're supposed to make you relax and forget your troubles. Oh, You're the nicest man. I have to go to my computer and I have to write something and send it to Clint. I'll tell you what. I'll uh, wander around and reminisce for a while and I'll meet you right back here. Very bad. It's the 
Mr. Emerson, um, I know you've been on this train for a long time. All right from his maiden voyage. You've probably seen everything. Huh? Oh, we've had births, deaths. Uh, lovers? As many lovers as they have been trips. <laughs> well, perhaps we can draw on your vast experience and uh, I could solicit your help. Well, anything you say, sir. You've seen this lovely lady I'm with. I'm trying to get her mind off her work. I thought maybe you could help me. <laughs> Last time I was at the dentist, things were not going well. But doctor, I asked, I've been using baking soda. So who's this? Your new boyfriend? Or are you babysitting? Hey, look, man, why don't you just back off, huh? Rick and Billy are my friends. Good friends. Should I spell that new concept for you, Todd? Since when do you have friends, Marty? Oh, you are just so full of surprises. Last night, they told me you were on the phone at Rody's. And when I get there, you've already hung up. And then a couple of weeks ago, you come on to me all hot and heavy, and we get it on real good. And then the next time you see me, it's like I'm the Invisible Man. Why don't you just stick with that idea? So what is it? You a, a tease, a nutcase, what? Just stay away from me. You bet I will. But when the mood hits, babe, next time, don't come looking for me. Because if you find me, you'll be real sick. That's you know I wouldn't come near you if my life depended on it. Yeah, and tell the beaver here, if he keeps it up, I'll break open his face. jerk. Yeah, Marty. What a jerk. And what the hell are you doing with him? Now you listen to me, Kilgore. I don't pay you to sit in your duff while Tina Lord Roberts waltzes around this town free as a bird. I want that witch behind bars before she chucks something else in my head. I gotta go. Oh, Asa, you poor thing. Let me look at you. What are you doing here? Well, I read in the paper about what had happened to you. I just had to rush right over here. See if I croaked? No. To see if you were still alive, silly. The other night at Hank's apartment, I... I felt very close to you. No offense, you're not the easiest guy to get close to. You sound like one of my ex-wives. <laughs> I realized that Carlo's return had upset you just as much as it had upset me, and I felt connected with you in some way. Do you have any idea who might have tried to kill you? I know who tried to kill me. Well, give me a clue. How about a name? Tina Roberts, my grandson, soon to be ex-wife. Tina! Oh, my goodness. Why would Tina want to do a thing like that? Oh, my. At the Palace restaurant the other day, I heard... No, that's impossible. What's impossible? Well, I just didn't think anything about it because I thought it was just a figure of speech, but I heard her vow to kill you. You what? Did you tell Hank Gannon this? No. You think I should? Yes, yes. You, you must sign a sworn statement. Well, fine, Asa. If, if it will be of any help to you, I'd be more than happy to do that. Oh, yes, ma'am. I, I think that'll come in real handy. <laughs> Asa. What are you doing here? Well, some refreshments, ma'am. No, thanks, Mr. Emerson. I'm fine. Wish my article was. Hmm? Problem? Yeah. I can't seem to concentrate. I don't know. The last run of the Silver Galaxy should be a great topic. And I need some inspiration. Well, you know, I'm no writer, but uh, have you tried love? <laughs> Excuse me? I mean, as an intro to your article, have you tried love? <laughs> You know, I've been here from the beginning, and I've seen more lovers meet on this train than you can count. Lose each other, find each other again sometime, right here on the Silver Galaxy. What? 
In fact, a couple fell in love right at this table. Really? Yeah, just after the war. They came out of Pennsylvania, got married in San Francisco. That's wonderful. After that, every year they take the train, visit their family out west. Silver Galaxy was a, a special place to get away from the world, be alone together. That's so romantic. Then one year, his wife died, and in her memory, he set up a special stateroom just for lovers. <clears throat> Told me not to give it to anybody who wasn't just as much in love as they were. Really? Mm -hmm. Does that stateroom still exist? I'd love to see it. Oh, yes, it does. In fact, the gentleman's in it right now. He said he wouldn't miss the Silver Galaxy's last run. Well, I hope you don't mind, ma'am, but I took the liberty of asking him, and he said he'd be honored. Great. When can I talk to him? What about right now? Good idea. Thank you. General Hospital's 30th anniversary... Anyway, so there I was, you know, I was face to face with this guy who made my life a living hell, and well, this rage came up, and, and before I knew it, I had a statue in my hand, and I just started beating him on the head. Just whack, 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 and, you know, Ace was down for the count. You finished? Look, man, it's the truth, okay? I swear it. So. What happens down? What, you cuff me, we go downtown? What? No, no, Ken, I'm gonna save the cuffs for the real deal. What does that mean? It's a noble gesture, but phony is a $3 bill. Didn't you just hear me say that Sonny, the housekeeper, saw a blonde woman running from the scene? Hey, listen, I can do blonde, I can do woman. Now, you've seen me in whoa, disguise, whoa, 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 Hank. Hold on. I, I don't even want to probe into that deep, okay? I don't think I need to. Look, can you say you were face to face with Asa while well, he was hit from behind? Sorry, pal. No cigar. Look, Tina, you've got yourself a good friend here. But my advice to you, get a lawyer, a good lawyer. Now, I'm going to be back here with a warrant for your arrest. <laughs> and. Remember what I said earlier. Don't even think about leaving town. Kate. Okay, I'll figure it out, all right? Go pack up the kids. Yeah. And then pack up yourself. Yeah. And then we're taking the next plane to Brazil. Thanks for the information on Paul. Yeah. So? Well, they're watching him for a concussion, but, uh, hell, you know Paul. <laughs> then they coined the term hardhead just for him. <laughs> a little tap on the head with a, some piece of old artwork isn't, uh, isn't enough to finish off Ace of Buchanan. Well, there's some good news today. <clears throat> Kev, you're, uh, you're upset about something. What is it? How does it matter? Of course it matters. Okay, well then, uh, well for starters, what about your editorial? Look, your mother has uh, already talked to me on that score. I don't think this has anything to do with my editorial. I think it has to do with Lindsay Butler. You know, when I walked in here, you could have cut the tension with a, with a knife. Yeah, well she and I haven't, gotten on that great. I can admit that. Oh, good. Maybe now we can get down to, uh, to what is really going on. You tell me. Look, I'm not gonna kid you. Your mother and I have reached a crossroads. I know that. As of today, we're we're legally separated. Well, hey, you know, thanks for telling me. 
Well, Kevin. Look, your mother and I have uh, been traveling in different directions for some time now. Away from each other. And I know you're angry about that. But if I'm going to survive this little trip, I can use all the all the support I can get from people who supposedly care about me. I can use your support. In fact, I need it. Clint, you're wanted in the city room. Can I wait? Uh, they need you to sign off on tomorrow's op-ed. Kevin. I'll see you later. Lindsay, wait a minute. I have to say I'm sorry. I haven't been very fair to you. I have no business making judgments. I don't even know you. Kevin, it's OK. No. No, it's not. Here I am uh, wondering whether you're good enough to be with my dad or not, when, to tell you the truth, I have trouble thinking about any woman that my dad is interested in, so. Look, you know, I understand. I really do. Thanks. Thank you. You didn't have to say what you said. I'm glad you did. Well, there you go, ma'am. Find the gentleman in there. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Emerson. I think that'll provide just the right color that the story needs. I do hate to disturb him, though. Oh, don't worry. He's expecting you. It's a little bit hard of hearing now, so you just go on in. Sure that's all right, Jim? Uh, all right, thank you. <laughs> Hello? Sir? I was wondering if you'd have a minute. <laughs> For you, madam, I have all the time in the world. In the ongoing march again, I can do for you, folks. No, thank you, Mr. Emerson. You've already been quite a help. Thank you. The pleasure's mine. Now that I see you're looking so well, I guess I'll be going. I would like to have a word with you in the hall, Alex. Oh, Alex, mm -hmm. uh, don't forget that little matter that we, we talked about. Consider it done, Asa. Little matter? Nothing to worry about, Renee. Excuse me. Renee, how are you? Please, don't pretend that you care. I'm a little worried, Alex, about Mortimer Byrne because of what you did to him. Oh, you mean Carlo Hesser. You know as well as I do that Mortimer Byrne is not Carlo Hesser. Oh, you poor thing. He's got you fooled, too, doesn't he? It's just uncanny how he can turn himself into that mild-mannered Egyptologist. Enough, Alex. 
jokes. Enough lies, enough deceit. Who's lying, Renee? Believe me, I know that Mortimer is Carlo, because I went directly to the source, as it were, and it was just as I had remembered. That's why I've been so terrified, because I know that Carlo is alive, and I know that I won't be if he has his way. I don't get it, Alex. You're either one hell of an actress or you're deranged. But I do know this, that somehow or other, you managed to switch Carlo's fingerprints from Mortimer Burns in the police computer files. Damn, I'm good. How did I do that? And we're going to prove it. Oh, we are. So that's what you've been cooking up with Carlo while you've been hiding him out. Do you know that that's against the law? <laughs> Aiding and abetting a criminal is against the law. I don't think I've done that. What do you call keeping Carlo in Ace's stables? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. What's going on between you and my late husband? What's happening? What's really the truth? You're giving me the third degree. You parted company with the law a long time ago, Alex. You chose a life of crime, including robbing my hotel twice. Yes? Must have been terribly frustrating for you when Mortimer Byrne, out of the goodness of his heart, managed to return all of the stolen goods to their rightful owners. What an imagination. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe you understand this. Don't you harm Mortimer Byrne. Don't you touch one hair on his head. What hair? Because if you do, I will personally see that you regret it for the rest of your unnatural life. Let's just forget Todd. He's a jerk, and, and I don't want him ruining our lunch. Come on, there's a lot more important things to talk about. Thank you. Marty, if he's such a jerk, why do you hang out with him, huh? Well, when I first met him, he was fun. One of Kevin Buchanan's frat buddies, how bad could he be? And then I just kept running into him at the university and roadies. Wait a minute, Marty, wait. Roadies? That's what you've been doing lately, hanging out at roadies? What are you, Rebmeister in training? Give it a rest, will you? No, Marty. You need to give it a rest. Okay, okay. I, I admit it. Ever since that night when I lost a certain, shall we say, perspective on how much drinking I was doing, the pills I was taking, and I went out in the stupid hospital, I've been a little rattled. Marty, maybe you need to get a little perspective, you know, maybe get your life together and do something with it. Jason, my one and only other friend, keeps telling me the same thing. Is this a message to uh, listen to the message? Well, you know, maybe you should give yourself a chance at least. Look, speaking of doing with you something with your life, I gotta get back to work. I'll see you guys later, all right? See you, Bob. He's so cute. Yeah, Rick's a good guy. You know, we've gotten really close lately. That's great. I'm really happy for you, Billy. Look, Marty, Rick gets off work in about an hour. What do you say you stick around and we'll drive you to your house? I mean, uh, the rectory. <sighs> How did you know that I wasn't staying with Andrew and Cassie anymore? I, I didn't. I, I just, just forgot. Billy, come on. I know you. You're not going to lie to me, either. Did Andrew tell you? <clears throat> Billy. He, he might have mentioned something to me about your moving out. Now I'm getting the this this lunch, this invitation out of the blue. Andrew put you up to it, didn't he? No, no. A little mission of mercy to rescue a lost soul. Billy. The truth. Is there a baby formula that's close? Okay, Marty. So maybe Andrew did ask me to talk to you. Great. Thanks for the lunch, pal. B B Marty, I, I was going to talk to you anyway, but he was he was worried about you. I was worried about you. I had been thinking about you a lot. I was planning sure, to get you. Sure, sure. What exactly did Andrew tell you about me? 
just that you had moved out and that you seemed a little troubled. Oh, how terribly caring of him. Marty, was, was there something that you didn't want him to tell me? We had a, a silly disagreement, that's all. That's why I left. Andrew was the one who blew it out of proportion. Well, don't be hard on him about it, you know? I, he really cares about you. Oh, yeah, so much that he won't even talk to me. I can't say as I blame him. What do you mean? Forget it. I don't know what I mean. What's that? Jessica Buchanan gave it to me. It's nice. Where are you going, Marty? To find a little purpose in my life. Just the man that I wanted to see. I'm flattered. Look, let's just drop the attitude, okay? I want to talk to you about Jessica. I'm very worried about her. She's told me some things, things that, well, that make her sound very upset. Marty, this is a whole new side to you. Have you considered a career in the helping professions? Don't you care? Because I do. Jessica's a really sweet kid. She's kind, she's funny. You don't have to tell me about Jessica. She's my sister. And I think I know how she feels. Fine. S sorry to bother you. I just thought I should tell you that yesterday when I spoke with her, I saw a really scared and lonely kid. And believe me, I know what that's all about. Marty, I gotta go, all right? I, I gotta meet somebody for lunch. You don't even care enough to listen to me! And I think Jessica knows it. That's her problem. Poor kid is crying out for help, and no one's listening to her! Nobody. Brazil. Why do you always want to go to Brazil? Well, have you ever been there, honey? It's it's gorgeous, okay? You've got Rio and Copacabana, the beaches. It's a great place Forget to... about it. Forget about it. I, I am not, I am not going to go be a fugitive for something I didn't even do. Okay, how can you prove you didn't do it, huh? That is why we are here. We are going to settle this thing once and for all, even if I have to kill the old buzzard. Renee. Tina, darling. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, she's back to finish the Asa, job. please. Can you believe this? Asa. Have you lost your mind, or is this some kind of game you're playing with me? Renee, please, call security. Oh, would you just stop it? Would you... Come on, Asa, you know that there is no way I would have hit you over the head with that sculpture, even though I would have liked to, believe me. But I did... How dare you kidnap my children? Kidnap you, loco? I was babysitting them. You have no idea what it's like being a mother. Neither do you, lady. Oh, please, 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 Tina, please, Tina, Tina, Tina. No, I don't let this upset you. Why do you say things like that? What do you expect? You think I'm going to shower with roses? She almost fractured my skull. Ah, that is such a lie! Yeah, I have a witness. Someone was at the Palace Restaurant. Heard Tina plotting to kill me. What? The witness is with the police right now, telling them everything they want to know. So pack your bag, sweetheart. Oh, don't take any belts or sharp things. Where well, you're going, they don't allow it. Hello, Hank. Alex, this had better be as earth-shattering as your message said it was. Well, making the earth move is my specialty. But have you got Carlo? No, not yet. Please sit down and make yourself comfortable. Hank, seriously, I just came from the hospital. I was visiting Asa. He just looked abs... I mean... Anyway, he told me that Tina Roberts is the one who tried to kill him. Yeah, yeah, cut to the chase. Well, it jarred my memory. Yesterday, in this very restaurant, I heard Tina say in a very loud voice that she was planning on killing him because he's been keeping her children from her. So I mentioned this to him, of course, and then he suggested that I mention it to you. I am a concerned citizen, Hank. So, here we are. You heard her specifically threaten to kill him? Yes, very specifically. And then she just marched out. And if you don't believe me, which you probably don't, because you don't usually for some odd reason, you could ask any of the other patrons that were in here yesterday. Okay, Alex. You've done your civic duty. So when are you planning on finding Carlo? 
We're working on it, Alex. Why doesn't that fill me with confidence? Hank, I highly suggest that you keep an eye on Renee Buchanan. Don't worry. We are. Good. That does fill me with confidence. Cheers. I'm satisfied. How about you? Looks good to me. Well, in that case, I'm going back to my desk and see if I can't nail that interview. Oh, uh, Lindsay, wait a minute. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you about, about something you said to me. I said a lot of things to you, Clint. <laughs> no, I, I mean uh, what you said to me about not wanting to be a transitional woman. That, well, that phrase has kind of stuck in my mind ever since. It's stuck in my craw. You're not a transitional woman. There's, there's no way you, you ever could be. I mean, you're too special a uh, oh, colleague. Too special a uh, uh, friend. So, how do you feel about going out with me? I don't know what to say. Well, say you will. Let me take you out on a proper date sometime. Are you sure this isn't a little too soon? Maybe, maybe you're you're not. This isn't the no, right time. This is my life, and I'm a big boy. I'll know when the time is right. Then when you say the time is right, I'll say yes. Wake up, wake up. Uh -oh, uh -oh. What is it about trains, hmm? Mm. Makes me sleep like a baby. <laughs> As the world outside speeds by. Let it. I'm looking at your laptop and I'm wondering, did you ever send that material you Oh, what a horrible oh, thing oh, to oh, say! Oh, oh. <laughs> Besides, when would I have had time to do that? Coffee doesn't seem terribly important to me anymore, does it? No, you're the only thing that's important. God bless the silver. What's the name of this? <laughs> galaxy. God bless the silver galaxy. <laughs> this is the beginning of the greatest adventure of our lives together, you know. Funny, actually, that we're beginning just as the train is ending. Why did that make me sad? Don't be sad. This train has had a long and wonderful life. So shall we. Let's just talk about the here and now, shall we? You and me. like to propose a toast to my charmed life. May it always continue. Yeah, you better watch out, boss. Your cup runneth over. But everything has fallen into place so beautifully. I'm just happy. The world is a marvelous place. Listen, I don't mean to bust your bubble or nothing, but what about Dr. Bernie? He's still running around out there, you know. Oh, but he's gonna run out of hiding places before too long. And besides, I put Hank on Renee's tail and soon she'll lead the DA straight to him. Huh. That's nothing. So we so happy about. Tina is about to be arrested for the attempted murder of Asa Buchanan. 
when they lead her off to the big house, I'm going to be there awaiting the broken-hearted cane with a sympathetic smile and hot casserole and a creamy shoulder for him to cry on. Talking about. Don't worry about it, Don't okay? How do you tell me not to worry about it? Did you see that look on his face? Asa's got an ace in the hole. And you're going to have the finest lawyer in Landview. Right, who? Nora Gannon. Nora. You think Nora can do this for me? <laughs> Come on, Nora Gannon against her ex-husband, Hank, one-on-one -on -one in court? Yeah, I think I'd bet on her any day of the week. Okay, what about this housekeeper that Asa has? And what about my fingerprints on that sculpture? And what about, what about this witness? Oh, God. It doesn't matter, all right? Listen. You're a mother who had her children taken away from her. Now, any lawyer worth her salt is going to have no problem convincing a jury of the lengths to which you were driven. What lengths? Oh, come on, let's just go talk to Nora, all right? Come on. Okay. What? You don't believe I'm innocent, do you? I'm sure I do, honey. You really think I did it? I, I'd understand if you did. I you mean, do. You think I tried to murder Asa? How could you? Start packing, Lou. 